Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's take a look at a, a classic problem in physics. And this is a mass hanging from a pulley. And we're going to wrap the cord around the pulley. Here's our pulley. And we're going to wrap a cord around the pulley. And then we're going to hang a mass. And we want to know how fast that mass will drop. Now, obviously, as the mass drops, the disk will rotate. And if this is acceleration A, then this thing is angularly accelerating at alpha. Okay, So this is the mass hanging from a pulley. And let's give you some other information. We'll say that the pulley is, in fact, a solid disk, mass m, and radius r. And it moves on a frictionless axle. Okay, So that's what my picture looks like. And now we need to figure out how fast this mass is going to fall. Now let's use a little intuition here. If there was nothing connecting the mass to the pulley, then the box would just fall at gravity, right? 9.8 meters per second squared. But since it's tied to this thing, it's probably going to fall at something less than 9.8 meters per second squared. And so when we're all done, we had better make sure that that is the case. Okay, how do we deal with this? Well, we have some forces that are acting on our mass. So let's draw the free body diagram for the mass. What do we have? We have gravity, mg, pulling down. We also have tension, T, going up. All right. Now let's think about the torque on the wheel. Well, this is my wheel. And the torque is being applied right there. And it is the same as the tension T that we found right there in the rope. What is the lever arm? The lever arm is in fact just the radius of the wheel because it connects at a right angle to the wheel. Okay, So what can we say? We can say the sum of the forces here is equal to what? Well, A we said was going down. So let's pick down as our positive direction. So that means mg minus t. And all of that is equal to m times A. Okay, That's one equation that's going to help us. And now let's look at the problem of the wheel. The wheel is being rotated, and so we have to deal with a torque equation. The torque is what? Well, there's only one. It's this tension acting at a radius r. And torque is equal to force times lever arm. So the force is just the tension t. The lever arm, in this case, is just the radius r. And torque, net torque, is equal to i times alpha. All right, and so now we have two equations, but we have to identify some other relationships to, in fact, solve this thing for a. So what we have with our pulley now is we have the following equations. We have the sum of the torque is equal to tension times the radius, which is equal to moment of inertia times alpha, the angular acceleration. But for a solid disk, we know exactly what the moment of inertia is. 1 half capital M R squared. We also know that the angular acceleration of that disk is related to the acceleration of the block as it falls.
because there is a relationship between tangential acceleration and angular acceleration, and that is A over R. Okay, so we can solve this equation for T. T is equal to one-half mr squared a divided by, I got to divide by another r, so I get an r squared down there, and that means that this whole thing equals one-half m times a. Okay, let's go to our other equation. We had mg minus t is equal to ma. And now we can plug in for t. We have t is equal to 1 half big M times A. We can move it over to the other side, and so we have mg equals little m times A plus 1 half big M times A. And now we can lump terms together, and we can solve for A. A is equal to little m over little m plus big M over 2, all of that times G. So let's just look at some of the limits and see if it makes sense. If big M goes to 0, then it's kind of like the pulley isn't even there. And if the pulley isn't even there, then the box should fall at G. Is that what happens? Let's see. Big M goes away. We got little m over little m. That's 1. And so, yes, A equals G. Good. What if the pulley is so massive that that little box can't get it rotating hardly at all? In that case, if big M goes to infinity, then that little box shouldn't be able to pull down on it at all, and we should have A going to zero. Is that what happens in our equation? Yes, big M is in the denominator, so if that goes to infinity, this whole thing goes to zero, A goes to zero. Okay, so it looks like that answer is making sense, and indeed that is the correct answer. All right, hopefully that's clear. Uh, if not, come see me in my office. Cheers.